K-I-L-R Killer game Hello there, gamers and simmers and pilots. I am the Killer Gamer, and welcome to the World Tour with Sublogic Flight Simulator 2 for the Commodore 64. And today happens to be a special one because we are leaving the default Flight Simulator 2 area and we are venturing into the first, well, when I say first, I don't mean number one, but I mean the first scenery disc that we're going to be venturing in, which is scenery disc number nine. And I will go ahead and show that to you <clears throat> as far as the map is concerned. So here is the original area that's covered by Flight Simulator 2, one of four. All right. So there's Chicago, Seattle, um, uh, what is it? San Francisco? Los Angeles? Where's my Flight Simulator 2 box? <laughs> uh, let's see. I got the actual maps right here. Los Angeles. Okay. <clears throat> so, LA, New York, Seattle, and Chicago. Basically, the main major areas, you know, that would have uh, <coughs> of interest, uh, the fly-in. So this was one of the four areas that was covered. Now, with scenery disc number nine, we now expand it to this. <laughs> so now, uh, you will see, here is Champagne. University of Illinois, this is where we're at. And you will see here is um, Aurora right here and DuPage. We were over here. Kankakee, Joliet, Bloomington Normal, Merrill C. Meeks. It's all right there. All these right here. Now this one here, Pewaukee, was not in it. So it pretty much covers from here to about there. I think it, I don't think it covers Danville, does it? Now, there's Vermilion, which, that must be Vermilion, because it does, because it, it says Danville, but it must be Vermilion, because uh, that says the Dan, that says Danville there for the Vor, so. But yeah, so this is the area covered by the default Flight Simulator 2. This is Scenery Disc 9. Um, it goes up a little little further than that, too. Um, so it goes over a little bit up there. And yeah, a little bit up there. Okay, so where are we going? We're going to go from Champagne. And we're going to here, Greater Peoria. So we're going to be passing by Bloomington Normal, and we're going to be going to Greater Peoria. Now, uh, how are we going to get there where there is a vor that we can uh, catch, uh, that we can uh, tune into and just directly get there? But I believe that if we take, if we leave on the three zeros, Three zero zero. Yeah, the three zero zero uh, vector that should get us right over the Greater Peoria. All right. <clears throat> so exciting stuff. We are now venturing into new territory. 
So let's take that off. And now we have a new graphic to add down below. Watch this. Boom. <laughs> I did some Photoshopping on that to clean it all up and make it look like it's brand new. Because if you, if you look at the images that are online, the, uh, the label looks all nasty and stuff. Now, I, I Photoshopped this and cleaned it all up. And yeah, it looks, looks nice and new. All right. So now, now it's time to go into the actual game. This is where things are going to get interesting. So now, and we're at Champagne, but we're still on the Flight Simulator 2 disc. So in order to load Scenery Disc 9, we have to put the disc in the drive, <clears throat> which is what I've done. Now, this is an emulator, so you would put the disk image in the drive and you're going to be hitting control E where E brings up the edit menu control E is going to bring up it's basically going to like um, log in that disk so let's do that and there we go scenery disk 9a Chicago and this is the area that we want. <clears throat> now the other side of the disc is going to have the other two areas, which is St. Louis and Cincinnati. So, and we will be going over those areas too. So that's what I'm saying. Um, we're not just going to blast through these uh, scenery areas. We're, we're, we're hopping around. We're hopping around. <clears throat> so now we just press any key to continue. And boom. Oh. Okay. I think some of these actually did have a fuel box. Maybe this and this one has to ha actually has the taxiways too. I was mistaken. It's been a while. <clears throat> I had thought that. <clears throat> On some of these, it actually just replaced it with just runways. But no, this one did not. It actually did replace it with... Look at that. Well, this is cool. Okay. So we're still at the airport. We're not on we're not near the fuel box like we were before, but we're still at the airport. Um, and this this does look like the fuel box here. Now from what I understand, the airports in general do not have fuel boxes. Um, maybe this one does because it's the original default area and so they did something special I don't know okay now I mentioned this before um, since we're going to be heading into some new scenery areas it might be nice to actually see some of it it's probably not going to be overly special you know because I mean this is the Commodore 64 but I, I want to go ahead and advance this time and uh, I'd say let's clear up the weather too. Why not? So let's go ahead and advance this time a little bit. Okay. So what we're going to do is hit E, not Control E. That brings us here. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn off auto coordination. So that way I've got access to my rudder. This will give me a little bit more fine uh, tune control over um, turning. Okay, so let's go ahead and change our time to somewhere around uh, just before dawn. Uh, I believe six is when that happens. So we're gonna change this to 530 and I went ahead and got rid of our weather 
and we'll go ahead and change that. Okay, and that moves us away from that moves us away from the fuel box. It's right over there though. There's a big blue thing. What is that? We got to take a look at that and see what that is. It should be out our Is it a tower? It's a block. It's a bo I think that's a hangar. It's a hangar. It's a blue hangar. Let's get this bad boy started. Head over to the little fuel box. My cat's meowing. <laughs> What was my rudder controls? I don't remember. Throttle, rudder, rudder, C and M. C and M, okay. Man, these keys are all over the place. Because now I got to use my rudder in order to move on the ground. And you'll see the rudders down here, and the airlines are here. Yep, so we got a, got a fuel box. And we got this actual box <laughs> right there. Okay, so let's find out from ATIS which uh, runway they want us to take off from. Well, they like to give us runway four, that's for sure. All right, which direction are we headed? Runway four. Look at this. This is nice and thick here on the on the side. They do a. I think they do a decent job with the scenery discs. They 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 spent a little bit more time on them. I mean, you still can't put a lot on the discs. I mean, I mean, come on. They're the they're the old style. They're the old style floppy discs. I mean. these, right? You, you can't put very much information on those. Okay, so for I gotta remember for when the flight when things are not coordinated In order to fly, you're going to have to use your rudder and your um, 
airlines at the same time on a keyboard. That's not exactly the easiest. Okay, so we're not in the actual... It's hard to tell! Okay. just slowly and easily make our way to the edge of the uh, airport there. Meanwhile, this is a good time to change our our uh, vores. Let's see. We were going to change that to three zero. Champagne is... Whoa! What is champagne? Champagne, something you drink, man! 110.0. One, one, zero zero. Ah, we are going off the run... Or not the runway, but... Taxiway. Stay on the taxiway! Stop looking at your radios! <laughs> All right, control in the one 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 zero, and control V one. Okay. I keep forgetting that I want to set our destination on VOR number one because it's got the DME. No, come on. Work with me. Okay, Peoria is 115.2. That ho, we can we can pull it in from here. 79 miles. We got a bit of a flight ahead of us. I think we'll try to capture the uh, we'll, 
capture the three zero radio here. Stay on the taxiway. Uh, let's see. Same thing. It should get us to a Peoria. I don't know if that has an ATIS. Take a look at our map. How far are we here? Okay, we need to turn here. Be a little hard to see. Okay. I think this thing has the threshold markers on it. <laughs> Look at that. This might be one of the few airports that does that. Runway 4. Alright, let's get ourselves stopped here. Oh. <sighs> Right. You all ready? Okay, uh. flaps are in the up position. Trim. Get that up a little bit. go. Let's do this. Uh, that was not the right one. <laughs> There's a white thing over here. I wonder if that's like a building for champagne. Something that they added. Come on. Up. Whoa. Try that again. We were full power. Why was it having problems? I don't know. All right. Say, yay! We're doing great.
Okay. We are up. And we're going down. Why? Come on. Oh, for crying out loud. What was that all about? <laughs> it's like, what are you loading up? I don't know. Oh, okay. Well, we're getting some altitude at least. That's good. Let's take a look out our windows here. What do we got going here? A lot of white stuff. Yeah, that's racist. <laughs> Alright, let's get ourselves turned. And we gotta turn our rudder at the same time. Or somewhat at the same time. Okay. Whoops. See, there's a little brown thing there, and I think that's supposed to be like a building or something. What is this blue thing? I have no idea. I remember that I enjoyed flying the scenery discs because it the detail just seemed better. The quality just seemed better. So it's just going to be fun to be able to relive that all over again. So let's get on our radial and then uh, Okay, I think Let's level out at 4,000. I think that should probably be good Remember, we we do our 2050. 2050. And we got this too that we could always try to follow. We might do that. Oh, too much. Too much. Too much. Now this is where I use my rudder and I'll just kind of turn myself over a little bit.
Got roughly 10 more minutes and we should see some daylight. Trying to get some uh, uh, straight and level flight. It's like before I do anything, I want to make sure we get on this uh, radio. <sighs> you know, I would not be surprised. Some, um, from what I remember reading, you could follow these roads out to... Um, some of the areas that you want to go to. So this road may very well go out to Peoria. So that would be interesting to see if it actually does. I, I don't know what this is. I don't think it's the horizon line, so I don't know what the blue is. That's We'll have to see when it turns daylight what that's supposed to be. I thought, you know, from a distance, I thought it was, um, like when we were on the ground, I thought it was the the taxiways part of the taxiways but it was still there when when we were up in the air so beats me maybe they're trying to be nice and say hey this is the horizon but that's why you have this right Assuming anyone's actually watching this or listening to this. <laughs> uh, I, for one, I appreciate it. And two, I'm glad you have the attention span to be able to sit here and actually watch this with me because it's. You know, and, and unless you grew up with this and, and and experienced it like how I did, you may be looking at this thinking, wow, uh, blue dotted line, uh, a white jagged line over here, and this. I don't see what's exciting, Killer Gamer. How can you stare at that? Maybe we'll just fast forward to the end and see how it turns out. It's not how fast we get there. It's the journey. It's the adventure. 
Besides, during the flight, we can sit there and talk about stuff. I can tell you one thing. There's going to be a lot of flights. I've been planning these uh, flights out. So if you are actually watching this video um, and not just fast forwarding and, and stuff like that, then you'll... You'll have the um, benefit of knowing that I've been planning out oh my goodness something like how many flights at least probably something like 250 flights And 250 flights will cover, I'm going to turn us here, so the rudder, I'm using the rudder, this gently turns us. This is going to, this is going to cover a good portion of the west part of the United States um, we will go east a tad from where we're at um, but we'll cover a good portion of the United States minus the areas that there's not a scenery disc in um, and after those 250 flights I know that's a lot and I know you're probably thinking are you really going to make that many videos? Yeah, I am. I've in I'm doing this. I'm doing this, man. I am going to do this. This is something that I've been wanting to do and I just I just really want to do it. I want to share it with you guys. But 250 flights is going to cover that that western part of the United States. We'll be in California, and from there, we are making the flight to, to um, Hawaii. And then we'll do some hopping around in Hawaii. And then we're doing the flight to Japan. And then we're going to do some hopping there. But once we're in Japan, that's pretty much where the Commodore 64 will end. Because there's, there's no coverage after that. Um... We will pick up with the Commodore 64 later on, um, like towards the end of the world tour, because uh, we'll we'll still be going um, up and around uh, Russia and Alaska and stuff, and then when we come back over. Uh, across um, Asia and Europe and Africa, because um, we're gonna we're gonna cross from Africa over into South America and then go north through that way and through Mexico. And when we do that, we're gonna work our way over to Florida, and that's when we're gonna pick up the Commodore 64 again because there'll be coverage there and we'll work our way up north um, we will hit New York although there's no coverage for the state of New York there is for that central New York area um, uh, for the Commodore 64 now ironically the uh, Amiga Commodore Amiga will have it But the Commodore 64 won't. Why? I don't know. I don't know why they didn't release that disc. OK. 
Okay. We are on our radio. Pretty darn close. Daytime! Probably looking at that like, huh? What's this? What's going on? It's looking kind of weird. Ah, okay. So, we're not daytime yet. We're, um... This is dawn. <laughs> so, we have a blue sky... But it's still dark here, so we, we're not going to see the green just yet. So it's kind of like half and half. That's how they're doing Dawn. Why didn't they do orange? They could have done like a light orange or something. Unless... There's something I'm not thinking. You can only have so many colors on the screen at once, I think. I can't remember how much it is, and maybe that's why... But they could have used this color, couldn't they? I don't know. Or maybe yellow? Who knows? Or maybe that would have just taken too much information. <clears throat> what was I talking about? I don't remember. <laughs> That blue dotted line, though, that seemed to have lined up with the horizon. Let's take a look out our windows here. See, so we got a river. Got a river. Bloomington is probably over here somewhere, would be my guess. I could set this for like normal. The name of the disk drive was called the 1541 in case you're wondering what that stood for. That thing was a whopper. My goodness, that thing was huge. And when that thing had a disk error, it was like that thing was <laughs> It's like, "Oh no, you messed up my disk." I wonder if I can find Let's see if I can find the fifteen forty one. La 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 images. Okay. There it is. <laughs> it was this this big thing here. Whoa. 
Oh, I zoomed in. I didn't really want to zoom in. But, uh, yeah, that's the 1541. So we could uh, run this so that way it's um, you have a authentic um, idea of like how the speed of it, you know, or with the emulator you can just run it, you know, fast so that way you're not sitting here for Who knows how long for it to for it to load? My goodness, the tape drive. Um, there was a game that I I, I loved. It was Forbidden Forest. It was uh, it was a birthday gift, if I remember correctly. And that took like thirty minutes to load on the on the data cassette and I would load that up and I I would like I wouldn't turn it off I would play it and then just like put it into the menu I would just leave it that way for the day and just kind of play it and and, and stuff that's like oh you know wow and it was a whenever there was a it takes so long and whenever there was like an error like loading from the cassette it's like you wait like 30 minutes and there's like an error somewhere in there and it's like oh I waited this long and you got an error um, I'm looking to see if I can find that tape drive Ooh, I think I found it It is the, I think it's the 1530 tape drive. There it is. <laughs> Look at that thing. We had the tape drive first with the Commodore 64 probably wanting well okay so if you if the my opening credits has a Commodore 64 that shows up with all the different little controls and stuff like that but uh, just in case you're wondering what a Commodore 64 looked like I will pull one up There you go. There's a Commodore 64 for you. So you had your F keys here. You had to... Oh, I don't know. I think there's like... I think the Commodore key would... Because you see there's like another F key. It's like F1, F3, F5, F7. And then to get the even ones, I think you had to hit the Commodore key and then this to get the other ones. You can see your control key is up here. Um, there's no numerical keypad, so you are controlling the flight simulator like here in the middle of the keyboard. So there's a cartridge port. Cartridge port is in the back. This was a this was a hot item when it came out. I mean, they were selling these things like a Kmart and Sears and. Uh, during the whole video game crash when with the com uh, not the Commodore, the Atari 2600 when all that stuff was just going bad. Commodore 64? Nope. Nope, that thing was popular. So you could play games on this thing. Um, a lot of people play games on it and there are cartridges. Uh, you just plug into the back and you can, uh, the Atari style joysticks, the same port so you could use your Atari joystick on this thing plug it right in and then, of course, there were um, 
there's like uh, Commodore Basic. You could write programs. I wrote like an adventure program one time. Um, I'm not gonna say it was really good, but <laughs> it was a thing. And um, and then for you know a little bit more sophisticated games like Flight Simulator or um, there was like Space Taxi and uh, Zork, I think I was on the Commodore 64 and Winter Games, Summer Games. Oh man, I had those. Um, Forbidden Forest. Some of them were on tapes and you'd hook the, the tape up and I think the serial and port was in the back. Um, parallel port for your printer. We had a dot matrix printer. That's that printer. It goes bzz, bzz, It's really loud. <laughs> and then you had the dots, the, uh, the, the holes on the side. You had to rip the paper off on the side. Oh, man. Uh, but yeah, you get the disk drive, that huge honking disk drive, and man, that thing was, you know, it was expensive, but that was, it was so great getting that disk drive. That thing was faster than that tape drive. I'll tell you, tell you what. And I, um, I think it was through some friends of mine. They were, they, it, um, you, uh, our scenery is not changing there. Oh, there it is. Um, it was my first exposure to pirated games. Um, my buddies were like giving me a, a disc that had like <laughs> tons of games on there. They were like, um, Impossible Mission and, and Space Taxi was on it and just like tons of other stuff. What was the other one? There was like uh, Raid Over Moscow was another one. Um, uh, was it International Karate? Oh, something like that. I mean, oh wow. So you just got, I was exposed to so many of these games on the Commodore 64. And that was a thing. That was just a thing. And um, there's the, the Commodore User Club. And with that, um, you could get yourself um, public domain copies. People were making um, uh, music with the Commodore 64 at the time. And, and now, now it, it's... You, you, it's popular the, the the chip tune music and the bit and the bit music um where people are using 8-bit uh sounds to make music oh i love it um i love what, how people are doing it today it sounds great and it's just it's really nice to hear that retro retro feel um so that was all that was all a thing um, and then the the Commodore Amiga came out. It was, uh, I think that was 1985. Was it 1985? I think it was 1985 that came out, the Amiga 1000. Oh, we should need to take this graphic off here. <laughs> you can't see anything. All right. So, yeah, the uh, Commodore Amiga came out. And... Uh, we had seen a demonstration of that from the Commodore Club, and that just blew me away. I was just like, wow, look at that. And that was with the Amiga 1000. But when the Amiga 500 came out, that was like the new Commodore 64. Because that, that was a self-contained keyboard. See, with the Commodore 64, you could just plug a TV up to it. Um, if I remember correctly, you could just plug a TV to it. You didn't need a monitor. That it was just. I, I think I think it was just like that. Um, you did need a monitor with the uh, Amiga Five Hundred, though. But it was. It was um, instead of it just being a box. It was a. It was. It was a keyboard, and the computer was in it. It was 
very easily portable and and that whereas the Commodore 64 was our home computer our family computer the the Amiga 500 was my computer I had saved up for that uh, I was doing a paper route at the time um, let's see 1980 it was 1987 when I got it so I would have been 16 I think I was doing a paper route and I was working at a grocery store at the time so I think I saved up around that but uh, yeah and when you know the very first uh, one of the first games that I got was Flight Simulator 2 because <laughs> I, I, I saw the graphics on that I'm like it's like wow it's like this is a step up from the Commodore 64 unfortunately it did not have the um, all the scenery discs available to it I wish it did here's the Amiga the, the Amiga 500 right here so here's the monitor this is what was called the workbench um, the first computer to truly multitask um, I believe it's the only computer that can truly multitask and the, uh, because they say it's like oh no the PC multitasks and it's like well not really it's it's hard to explain I, I, it, there's a different type of multitasking um, the Amiga was like the very first true one to actually run more than one thing at, at once um, here's the disk drive this we, they were three and a half inch disks there's a disk drive right here you could expand this there's an expansion port on the on the side here and there's one underneath And, uh, oh, I think it was, you could have 256 colors on the screen at once. There was a mode that allowed you to have 4,096 colors, but not so much with games, but some very talented uh, game artists could do... To use 256 colors and it looked great. Um, Psygnosis was like one of the one of the best game companies for the Amiga. They had like the best sound, the best graphics. Lemmings uh, came from Psygnosis. So as we've been talking here, I've been uh, adjusting my gyro compass, making sure my altimeter is still adjusted. All right, we are 26 miles away from the airport. Let's go ahead and we're gonna pull up the map again. Here's our list of right here. It's hard to read, so we're going to zoom in here. Okay, let's look for Peoria. And here it is right here. Hit, I think, is this listing the runways? 13, 4, and 22. Okay, Greater Peoria. Yeah, it gives us the thing PIA all right so 659 is our altitude the star what is that star oh is that fuel yeah okay so these actually have fuel it's the scenery disk one through six that don't have it these have it though 
That's interesting. Okay, I had forgotten about that. Vasi. V-A-S-I. This is your ILS column. This is the ATIS. Let's go back to Peoria again. All right, Peoria has an ATIS. This is just our runways. Meow! Well, let's tune in to one two six point one. One two six. Whoops. Yeah, we got it. Well, I thought that was Adis. Now that's... Maybe we're not close enough. Thirteen, four, and twenty-two. Thirteen, four. Yeah, I see a runway four. Hmm. Uh, runway thirteen and a twelve. Okay. Oh, okay. Got it. Devasi, V A S I. So that's going to give us our vertical. Those are the little things. That's right. That's going to help us with our glide slope. I'm like trying to figure that out because I forgot that these actually had them. So they actually imp. They, they stepped it up a notch with these um, scenery discs when by the time they got to this one but one through six was not like that they didn't I don't they didn't have the the Vasis in there they just had the runways there's no taxiways there's no fuel boxes. Eighteen miles to go. And seven more minutes and I think we'll have daylight. There we go. Okay, so they want us to take runway four. That shouldn't be too bad. Once we see the airport, should be able to fly alongside this side of it. And it should be on the other side of the river. We'll pull up the uh, map again. Here is Greater Peoria right here. And here's the river, right here. So it should be right on the other side. wonder if this is it. Dump, dump, dump.
This makes me wish that they actually finished the rest of the eastern part of the United States now. Well, even then, I wish they did. But you know, people have done homebrew 64 games. Couldn't someone do a homebrew scene, like actually finish what Sublog Sublogic started? Couldn't they do the scenery discs? The, the missing scenery discs? You think someone smart enough would be able to dig into the existing scenery discs and see how it was done and then just do that for put in the you know the airports for the that is definitely the airport for the missing ones whoops direction here. Bring our flaps down here. Gonna be a little tough. try to turn us around here. Plenty high. <laughs> that sounded bad. <laughs> Try to slow down here.
I'm trying to get lined up. We'll get this figured out here. Keep an eye on the airport from this side. We need to keep an eye on our instruments. And there's nothing to look at out the uh, front window. That is probably the city of Peoria. start doing a little turn here. Try to bring the airport in sight. Tells me we might be a little bit more closer than we are definitely close. I don't think we are going to make that runway. We will try. Flaps down the way. We'll slow down here. Turning again. Working it here. Oh, working on getting over there. Okay, so the taxiway, you'll notice the taxiway is actually brown. This makes it a lot easier to determine what's the runway and what's the taxiway. See, these are a lot easier to, to see. Oh, and it looks like 
it looks like they it looks like the runways are brown too but they got it lined out in white their art department had to be commended here because they were doing a much better job okay we are coming up here come on get lined up here for me come on that's not quite lined up we're getting there though power bring it on over here come on almost got it don't crash don't crash This is what Marisi makes looks like on the scenery desk. Ah, oh, that whole flight. We jumped out. We're good. <laughs> Let's get our coordinates set and let's. We're not going to fly that over again. Uh, 16670. 16000. We'll just put that as zero. Yep. E. I went ahead and filled up our fuel tanks and everything too. And it looks like it put us on the fuel spot too. Kind of fitting. But yep. That's it. See, so there's the river. So. Okay, well, that wasn't the greatest of landings. Oh, this has uh, my wife is laughing at me. No, <laughs> she's in the other room. <sighs> yeah, did a lot of crashing in this. It gets it gets pretty frustrating. <laughs> Not the easiest. All right, well, we made it to Peoria. We just kind of like, we jumped out. Uh, we'll just say we broke our landing gear or something. We'll, you know, it's kind of a crash. Doesn't mean we, um, it, okay, we need to get the landing gear fixed. All right. So anyway, um, why is the engine still running? I turned off the, the mags, so I, I don't know. I don't know why it's running. It shouldn't be. Um, thanks for joining on this uh, interesting flight on the very first flight on our scenery disc scenery disc number nine um, we won't be going back to the flight simulator 2 disc for a while the next time we go to that scenery disc probably won't be until we hit the Seattle area um, because the third area will be Los Angeles and the last area 
is San Francisco, and that's a scenery disc all on its own before we go to Japan. So out of the four areas on the, on the Flight Simulator 2 disc, we'll have three of them. Um, and then we won't hit New York and the rest of that until we cross over uh, the rest of the world and stuff. So it's going to be a while. But anyway, thanks for watching. Um, I know this was a rather long video, so if you stuck with me this long, congratulations. I uh, tried to make it as entertaining as possible just by talking to you and uh, just kind of sharing some stuff with you. Um, anyways, um, leave your comments down below of what you thought. Maybe share some memories of your own. And be sure to check out this same flight, hopefully without the crash. <laughs> on the other simulators, and I will see you next time. And if you had fun watching this flight, then you might enjoy watching the same flight on one of these other simulators. It's a great way to compare the difference between them, but it's also a nice way to relive some old memories, or make some new ones. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you around in the wild blue yonder.